Turkey accuses the U.S. of creating terrorist armies and warns of military intervention. Turkey has lashed out at Donald Trump and accused the U.S. of creating terrorist armies in a sensational claim. Turkey's deputy prime minister ravished the leader of the free world for backing Syrian Kurdish YPG forces, which Turkey has deemed a terror organization. Newman Kurt Ulmus said, There has never been an incident where a group in the Middle East has been armed, and they returned the weapons. The United States have formed more than a terrorist organization there, they formed a small-scale army. Turkish President Recep Erdogan also warned that Turkey is ready to intervene militarily in North Syria to repel Syrian Kurdish forces. Turkey have long branded the YPG as a terrorist group, although it forms a major part of the U.S. coalition campaign to capture ISIS stronghold of Raqsa, Syria. Ankara officials denigrate the YPG insisting they represent a security threat. They see it as an extension of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, which has been fighting an insurgency against the Turkish state for decades, according to reports. Tensions flared between the U.S. and Turkey after U.S. officials told Reuters last month, weapons provided to the YPG will be taken back once ISIS was defeated. But U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis has left the possibility of longer-term assistance to the YPG claiming they may need further artillery for the future. Mr. Mattis said, We'll be recovering the weapons during the battle, repairing them. When they don't need certain things anymore, we'll replace those with something they do need. Turkish President Erdogan reportedly echoed Mr. Kurt Ulmus' comments, calling the U.S. a sponsor of the terrorist YPG group. Speaking ahead of the G20 Leaders Summit in Hamburg later this week, he drew further tensions with the U.S., siding with Qatar over its dispute with other Arab states. Blasting their 13-point demands as unacceptable, Erdogan told France 24, when it comes to this list of 13 items, it's not acceptable under any circumstances. He added, we remain loyal to our agreement with Qatar. If it requests us to leave, we will not stay where we are not wanted. U.S. defenseless from North Korean missiles military expert says. There are no guarantees the U.S. could defend itself from North Korean missiles, a military expert has claimed. Michael Allen, senior fellow for missile defense at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, cast doubt that the U.S. could shoot down an ICBM launched by tubby dictator Kim Jong-un. The expert said while Pyongyang was several steps away from creating a dependable ICBM, he could not offer assurance that the U.S. missile defense system could protect the American homeland. He added, even if it had a test record of 100 percent, there are no guarantees. Mr. Ellen's alarming comment came after North Korea successfully launched an ICBM into Japanese waters. U.S. officials confirmed Chubby Kim's boast that the missile can travel 4,970 miles, which would bring western states Alaska and Hawaii well within Pyongyang's range. Briefing reporters on Wednesday, Pentagon spokesman Navy Captain Jeff Davis said, We have confidence in our ability to defend against the limited threat. Mr. Davis cited a successful test in May when a U.S. missile interceptor shot simulated Korean explosives out of the sky, but conceded the program was not perfect. One component, the ground-based mid-course defense system, demonstrated a success rate just above 55 percent. A second component, the Aegis system deployed aboard U.S. Navy ships and on land had about an 83% success rate. Mr. Davis added, it's something we have mixed results on, 
but we also have an ability to shoot more than one interceptor. Fears that all-out war would break out between the Hermit Kingdom and Washington were heightened after U.S. President Donald Trump ordered a retaliatory missile launch in a direct warning to the Hermit Kingdom. But China and Russia have told the president to avoid escalating tensions with North Korea with both favoring a more diplomatic approach. Both Moscow and Beijing share land borders with North Korea fearing devastating consequences if Kim triggers a nuclear conflict with the Donald. North Korea, that's after Pyongyang test-fired a new missile in violation of UN sanctions. The statement came from Washington's ambassador to the UN during a session of the Security Council. Caleb Mopin has the details. Speaking to the 15-member body here in Manhattan at the United Nations headquarters in the Security Council chamber, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley spoke strongly not just against North Korea, but against any country that she felt supports them. Now, in her statements, uh, largely condemning the recent launch of a missile, uh, she went as far as to threaten the use of military force, uh, utilizing military options. Let's take a listen to what she said at the Security Council. The United States is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies. One of our capabilities lies with our considerable military forces. We will use them if we must. Now, this statement from U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley comes following a Twitter storm from Donald Trump and statements uh, from other U.S. officials accusing China of having economic relations with uh, the DPRK that are inappropriate or illegal. China has responded and said that all of their trade with North Korea is completely legal, legal and compliant with international laws and treaties. Now, interestingly, at, uh, at this point, the United States uh, will soon submit a draft resolution to the UN Security Council, and US leaders say that if this resolution is not passed, uh, they will take action on their own. Now, uh, the Russian envoy, uh, he also spoke to the UN Security Council, um, and he said that sanctions are not the way out of the crisis. Uh, he went on to urge uh, the UN Security Council to have a more dialogue. Sanctions cannot be a cure-all, and this has been demonstrated by history. So what we need here is to seek a political solution and be creative in our diplomacy. We've proposed, as I've said in my statement, to work collectively. There has been a proposal from both Russia and China to de-escalate the situation on the peninsula, uh, with not only uh, North Korea ending its nuclear proliferation and its testing of missiles, but also the United States uh, getting rid of this THAAD missile system in the south uh, and, and ending their provocative military exercises with South Korea. So a lot of different uh, proposals being made. Uh, the world is waiting to see this resolution that U.S. leaders spoke of. Earlier, we spoke to London-based political analyst Adam Gary and Brian Becker from the U.S.-based Anti-War Answer Coalition about the developing crisis. The North Korea launched a missile that wasn't intended to hurt anyone, and it did not hurt anyone. And what we saw at the United Nations today was the continuation of the spectacle in which the United States and her increasingly few allies are using that international body of peace as a kind of global apartheid to justify and rubber stamp wars and sanctions which amount to war. They're going to be watching today's proceedings. They're going to hate the United States even more than they already do. They'll see Russia and China as countries which don't necessarily always agree with them, countries which aren't allies to them, but countries which do not wish them and their people harm. They're countries that want to engage in peace. They're countries that could end up saving North Korea from American aggression, and they will smile upon that surely. They're not provoking the international community. That's the spin based on Washington's dominance in the international community at the United Nations. Just three weeks ago, the United States carried out a bomb, a nuclear bomb dropping drill that simulated the nuclear destruction of North Korea. Nobody called that provocative. When North Korea sends off a missile test saying we're not going to be bullied, that's provocative. So, you know, the question, the narrative of North Korea's provocations and, and provocative activity in the face of the United States and South Korea carrying out the largest war exercises in the world, simulating the destruction, the invasion and destruction of North Korea, while that's never considered a provocation, 
Uh, that just doesn't ring true. That's a double standard, and we need to stop accepting the dominant narrative.